what it's really designed to do is to eliminate the man. And, I, I, and I'm glad that this young brother is here today because I really want to speak to you. See, because the thing I need you to understand about this whole message is we're living in a society today that's built on competition. Competition said that I'm better than you. If i got a bigger title than yours, I'm in a better position than you. I make more money than you, therefore I'm better than you. We're living in a day and a time where everything is about competition. What came first, the chicken or the egg? But you see, here we find in this particular passage of Scripture, Jesus talking to the disciples. And he asked them, what was that y'all were disputing about on the road? And they were embarrassed. They were ashamed. They didn't want to tell him what they were talking about. But he already knew. He said, I know. Y'all was debating about who was the greatest. But see, what we need to understand is that they weren't debating about who was the greatest between the disciples. They were wondering about, back, go back to Matthew, the 18th chapter, and the first verse. They were debating about who was the greatest in heaven. They wanted to know was God greater than Jesus. See, and the same thing is happening in society today. They want to know was the man better than the woman or the chicken better than the egg. But I stop by to let you know three things today. Number one, first of all, it doesn't matter. You can't have one without the other. See, it doesn't matter the chicken or the egg. It doesn't matter God or Jesus. Jesus said the two of us are one. He said if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. So therefore, he wanted the people to know that the Father and I are one. We are equal. We are in this together. So the first thing you need to know is you can't have one without the other. It didn't matter which one came first. You can't have the chicken without the egg, and you can't have the egg without the seed. So let me help you understand, women. Let me help you understand, men. You can't have a baby without the seed, and you can't have the seed without the egg. The two go together. See, we got to stop all these women's day and men's day sermon at the expense of the other gender. I got to keep it real. You come in here on women's day and the men sitting in the corner. They ain't going to say nothing good about us today. <laughs> and then you come on men's day and well, it's the day we ain't got to go to church. We ain't going to get enough food. But see, what you have to understand, the word of God is universal. It's something in there for everybody. But see, we live in a world where we say we in competition with one another. I don't know about y'all, but I came up on time and never. Y'all know the song, I am number one. Right? Y'all know about it. Two is not a one and three, nobody remember. I used to get mad at that. I still got the CD. Y'all know the song, I am number one. Y'all know the song, I am number one. Oh, hey, look, 
I got this chance, I got this power, y'all. I'm going to use and abuse. He didn't. He stayed focused on the mission. And the problem with us today in the church, we have lost focus on the mission. See, we fight for position. And when we got a little position, we don't want nobody to have none. I know I ain't talking about that. And when we get in church, we forget why we're here. We forget what we're here to do. We forget what our calling is. Can I call it the truth? We forget what we came here to do. That's why we can't get nobody from the church. Why do you want to go somewhere where there's chaos and confusion? Why would I want to sit there and be abused all day long when I serve a God who said, come as you are? Woo! Thank you, Lord. Yeah. That's right. As pastor would say, I know it's tight, but it's right. <laughs> See, because every now and then, we got to tell the truth about this thing. We are all in this together. That's right. We got to right. stop this bigger. We got to stop this fight because that's how you grow the church. We got to start inviting people in. I don't know about you, but I came up during a time where there was no neighborhood. The whole neighborhood was a family. That's right. That's right. That's right. If we had one watermelon, they would cut the watermelon up in a whole neighborhood. <laughs> but now we only buy a meal for one. Hold up, it's just big enough for me. <laughs> you want one, go get your own. I can't tell them, I, I, I ain't going to lie about what I do. I buy four wings. No, look, I need four wings. I didn't buy five. I gave you one. I got to go five. I go four, but I need mine. <coughs> we all be selfish. We live in a selfish society. We live in a world of competition. But that's not God's design. He didn't mean it for us to be that way. That's right. That's why he said, in the second verse, he said, guess what? And the first shall be last. <laughs> See, if you desire to be first, what you're going to end up doing is finding yourself in the back. That brings us to number two. Number two, when it, in the debate between the chicken and the egg, you have to understand it didn't matter. The most important thing was you have to be in the right relationship. Let me help you understand why you have to be in the right relationship. When I first met Sister Nikki, I used to show off. Can I, can I get real for y'all for a minute? How many of y'all told some lies and did some stuff that you wouldn't normally do to impress somebody? Everybody in here tried to impress somebody, right? But guess what? If you was in the right relationship, you wouldn't have to impress nobody. You could get what you need to get simply by being yourself. See, that's what Jesus was trying to get them to understand. It's not about who first. Because ultimately, if you try to show off more times than not, the truth come out and then what? You get in first. And the person would have said, you know what? You'd have been all right if you'd have just been yourself. <laughs> That's what Jesus was trying to get them to understand. That's what we got to know. People, stop trying to impress people. Stop showing off. Be yourself. Chuck used to tell me all the time when I came here those feet as a young man. Because I was bad. I knew I was cold. I was good. But he used to remind me, you are not the best. <laughs> Brother Carol, you are not the past. <laughs> so what he was reminding me is, wait your time. <laughs> See, that's what you have to understand. In the debate about the chicken and the egg, if you're in the right relationship, it doesn't matter. See, can I tell you something? I, I, I'm, I'm appalled at what I find at weddings now. Have you been to a wedding lately? I've been to so many weddings lately that I can't even understand the vows no more. They don't even say the stuff they used to say because they're so scared of offending the bride. Or if God says submit yourself to your husband, guess what? That's what it meant. 
and the set treat your wife with respect, that's what they meant. It is not for you to change. It is not for you to soften. It is what it is. See, but we want to take everything God did. We want to tell the world that God made a mistake. God didn't make no mistake. In the debate about the chicken and the egg, he didn't want us to know which one that came first. We've been warned for a long time who fought was going to add more heat for. Ooh. You want to know the truth? It was both of them That's right. Because both of them sinned. Yeah. And guess what he did? He ate both of them out. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't matter who was first. He kicked them both out. And guess what? We still argue about the same thing today. Who fault was it? It's your fault. Well, no, it was your fault. If you'd have done what you supposed to do, well, you would have been where you supposed to be. Well, guess what? If both of y'all had been home, it wouldn't have happened either way. That's a See, there lies the problem. You wasn't watching, he wasn't watching, and the man snuck in. I learned something. I 
learned that I have not arrived. I learned that I'm not finished. I learned that I still got work to do. That's right. When you think you got to that plateau, That's right. That's right. when you ain't got nothing else to do, when you ain't got nowhere else to go, you fooling yourself. See, what I need for us to understand, we have to be willing to submit to the will of God. We have to be willing to say, it doesn't matter from first, it doesn't matter from last, as long as I'm serving God, I'm just happy to be here. I may not be the first one in heaven, I may not be the last one in heaven, but oh, thank God, I will get to heaven. We got to stop this competition. It don't matter which came first, the chicken or the egg. It don't matter which one is more important, the man or the woman. What matters most is that we understand that we submit and give in to the will of God. We got to understand, we got to get back to serving God. We got to stop this in-house bit. I got to keep it real. We got to stop this in-fight. And guess what? It ain't been in church. It's in our house because our children are watching. Can I keep it real with y'all? No, I'm a basketball no, referee. Y'all know, no, right? That's right? One thing that hurts my feelings the most is when I go to these games and I see the attitude of entitlement in these little children. When you call a foul on a kid, they got the nerve to turn around. What? That ain't a foul? Wait a minute, I went to school to learn these rules, son. You just played the game. You <laughs> <laughs> made your old ball here, fool. You crazy. <laughs> And then I say to myself, well, I wonder where he got that from. <laughs> but let the school be lopsided. I learned where they get it from. They get it right over there in the bleachers. From the parents who have become so competitive that the children can't have fun. They out there fight. And guess what? It ain't the children fight. I seen parents run over and grab little children. What does it take to be number one? It doesn't take anything to be number one. Especially when you hurt the competition. All right, Em. So you gotta understand, we gotta stop fighting one another and start supporting. We say it Sunday at the sun, right? We do. Love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, hang the law and the prophet till 1230. Till <laughs> 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 1230, somebody gonna get it. <laughs> Me, right? It doesn't matter who's number one. If you're in the right relationship, you don't mind submitting. I don't mind putting my wife on a pedestal. I don't mind telling her she's my queen. I don't mind telling her she's the sugar in my coffee. The sprinkles on my ice cream. The icing on my donut.
And then some people got hired at the end, right? And they got the same pen. And the people at the beginning said, hold up. We can work here all day. I can give them the same thing you gave me. And he said, but you bought me in the beginning for the same price. So guess what? It doesn't matter when you came. You all get the same thing. So what am I saying to you today? Be reminded of the thief on the front. It doesn't matter when you come. All that matters is that you come. See, everybody not going to get it in here. There's that sinner out there that's going to take it just before that last breath. I accept Jesus as my Lord and And guess what? His reward is the same as you. See, we got to get out of that competition. It's not a race. It's not a fight. What it is, it's a struggle. Because there's a war out there, y'all. The devil is fighting. And he's fighting for your soul. He's fighting for the soul of this city. He's fighting for our babies. But what we got to do, we got to stop, stop fighting each other. And it's like I told the men in men's ministry yesterday. To be the head of the house, brother, how they can attest, doesn't mean you the one who gives the order. To be the head of the house means you want to be the first one to go. To be the head of the house means you ought to be the first one on your knees. To be the head of the house means you ought to be the first one to pray. Because for some of us, your wife will have to get over that shock. She will have to recover. They will have to revive her when she sees you praying. <laughs> <laughs> they might be a fan of her a little bit. <laughs> but when she finally wake up, <laughs> and she find me over there on my knees. I trust God enough to know. I'm saying this to you, brother. You got to lead your family. When she find you over there, she going to join us. And when she join you, she going to have no problem whatsoever following you. But in following you, you got to be the man she that's the message. Not the gender. The lead. How many of us out here right now today are ready to be leaders? I didn't say pastors. I didn't say preachers. I said leaders. See, we got to get over positions and titles. We got to start doing work. See, how many of us are ready to lead us into battle? How many of us are ready to lead us into this war? We in spiritual warfare. Where the leaders at? Where those who are willing to step out and step up? It doesn't matter who came first. What matters most is who's going to get the job done. So I'll leave you with this. We'll do a passage on the line. So you got to take a little bit from everybody. If you understand that it doesn't matter who's first. Tammy Man had the right understanding. But she said, God will provide. Yes, yes. Yes. She said, God provides. So why do I worry about my life? I know that's right. When you come to my rescue a thousand times, how many times is the rescue? Amen. Every other voice. It is a lie. How many times did those said that they love you, they care about you, lie to you? <laughs> said, but God provides. Said, in ways I can't explain and can't deny. How many times did you had your back up against the wall and you didn't know how you was going to get out of it? But God made a way. He said, the little that I had, he multiplies. How many times when your money wouldn't stretch? Yes. Just when I feel like he won't show up, all of a sudden he's right on time. Just when you feel like yes. you're about to throw in the towel, yes. God will provide. He yes, says he'll come through. When the cloud of doubt begins to rain down on you, how many times have you doubted them? Tell the truth about it. He said, test. 
five for a younger person with less experience? How many people getting walking papers for somebody who don't even know, who needs you to train? So that now you finally see what God can do for you. So tonight, close your eyes. There's no more need to fight. Just simply sit back and watch. God provide. I know that's right. So I'm saying to you today, it doesn't matter the chicken on the egg. It doesn't matter male or female. It doesn't matter first or second. What matters is God loves us all. Yes, God created man and woman equal. But because of the sin in the garden, God kicked both of them out together. Because he wanted them to learn to work together. We got to learn to work together. We got to put our differences aside. We got to stop arguing about stuff that don't matter. As they say in the world, they don't, worry, don't, don't worry about the small stuff, don't sweat the small stuff, because all stuff is small. That's, it. That's the bottom line, church. We got to come together on one accord for one reason. One God, one faith, one baptism. One me, one you. All together, we're one. God bless you. Thank you. Whatever state of mind, just come. 